This episode of D News is brought to you by Audible. What's the difference between a movie pirate and a music pirate? Booty! Lots and lots of booty. Hey everyone, Lacey Green here for D News. Until this week, I've kind of lumped pirates of all kinds into one category. Well, maybe with the exception of separating pirates at sea from pirates at a computer. They're just a little less violent, you know? This week, a new study published in the Journal of Behavioral and Experimental Economics found that there are actually some significant differences between the group of people that pirate mostly movies and people that pirate mostly music. The biggest difference is that movie pirates still spend a lot of cashola on the legal enjoyment of movies. Not so much the case for music pirates. Those who pirate movies are also, on average, wealthier, more likely to live in a city, more willing to cut down on piracy if they believe it's hurting the industry, and are also less likely to believe they'll get caught than music pirates. Why the divide between the two groups? The scientists believe it forms out of the technological demand of illegally downloading movies, as in it's a little harder to do. You have to figure out how to torrent, you have to know how to play it back, and then there's also the issue of storing lots of big files. They believe this is why movie pirates tend to be a little more technologically savvy than music pirates. The fact that movie pirates spend more money on legal content shouldn't come as a huge surprise. Several studies have found that people who pirate spend more money on media than people who purchase everything legally. About 30% more, in fact. The idea is that pirates are just bigger consumers of media. Period. So what could this mean? Well, for one, it busts the myth that pirates are just people who don't want to pay for things. They do pay for things, especially movie pirates, just not everything. A few other thoughts. The fact that movie pirates still buy so much legal content and are willing to cut back suggests that convenience might play a role in pirating. It's there, readily available, while the legal alternative isn't. Maybe it's not available legally online. Maybe it's only available in another country. Maybe you have to drive to pick it up and go rent it. And when you're there, sitting on your couch, the hassle or impossibility of those legal alternatives just aren't persuasive enough. Another possible implication is that some movie pirating happens when people feel ripped off. Like that one time I tried to rent The Hobbit when it first came out on iTunes and it cost like $15 for one play. Or for instance, if the pirate believes that there's a good chance the movie will be terrible and doesn't want to fork over 14 bucks to see a crappy movie. It's not that they don't have the money, it's that they don't feel like it's worth the money. And for those of you interested in legal content and helping out the show, you can get a free audiobook at audiblepodcast.com slash dnews. Oh yeah, you can get your Hobbit fix that away. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.